Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So apparently there are some cult pastors out there that accused against yours truly for saying that the original Greek is garbage and that when we confess Jesus is Lord, at Philippians chapter 2, when we confess Jesus is Lord, that we'll be confessing toward Ruckman instead. So these people, they just stretch things beyond the imaginations and they'll take clips from me that don't last more, somewhere between five to seven seconds, to, and they'll cut off a certain important point where I actually can explain myself. It's at that name of Jesus Christ that every, all of creation will bow and bend. It's not the name of Mohammed. Right. It's not the yeah. name of Buddha. Right. It's not the well. name of Confucius. Yeah. It's not the yeah. name of Ellen G. White. It's not the name of Mary Baker Eddy. It's yeah. not the name right. of Joseph Smith. It's not the name of Charles Russell. Yeah. It's at the name of Jesus Christ yeah. that all will yeah. bow Amen. and confess that Jesus Amen. Christ is Lord yeah. to the glory yeah. of God the Father. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All will bow to him. So why do you have to bow to the things of this earth? Why do you have to bow to the things of this world when all of those things will bow to Jesus Christ? Yeah. You bow to fame. You bow to money. You bow to popularity. Well, you bow to starting your own little cult yeah. movement on the internet. You yeah. bow to yeah. you bow yourself to education, yeah. higher education. Good, you bow yourself to ball. But all those things will bow to Jesus Christ. And we'll yeah. Yeah. Do yourself, do yourself, yeah. who your fire at us. Those of you who wag your finger at us, your finger at us and called us Ruckmanites and idolaters, you will one day bow the knee and you will confess Jesus as Lord Amen. and say, I am wrong. They're going to bow the knee and they're going to confess every preacher. That they criticized online. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, hey, you did a hundred more, so you're not done. You keep saying I'm sorry. Like, hey, hey, hey. And all those people just yeah. said they're going to hell. They're going to hell. They're going to hell. They're a fag. They're a queer. They're a fag. They're a queer. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to say yeah. sorry to all yeah. of them. Yeah. Both of them are going to bow the knee yeah. to yeah. Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Yeah. And they will bow the knee if they are saved at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wrong. That's right. You're a dispensationalist now? <laughs> yeah. 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 Come on, say it. Amen. Say it. I'm a dispensationalist. No, no, no. Say it out loud. Yeah. I'm a dispensationalist. So let me break it down real quickly so I can explain myself easily. Okay, first of all, they claim that when I say in Philippians chapter 2, when we confess Jesus is Lord, that we'll be confessing toward Ruckman instead, and that people who are in the wrong, they'll be confessing toward the truth of dispensationalism as well. So they're against that. Well, here's the thing. Philippians chapter 2, it says this. So I guess they don't read their Bible. Verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, verse 10, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Notice this matches with Romans chapter 14, verse 11 through 12, that when you confess that Jesus is Lord, you will also confess your wrongdoing. So that was the point of my video, that when you confess Jesus is Lord, which I did in the video, I'm saying you're going to confess Jesus is Lord, not toward Ruckman. You're confessing Jesus is Lord. But at the same time, you'll be confessing to the people you've wronged, the wrong things that you've done. You have to confess that as well, because the Bible says right here, in Romans chapter 14, verse 11, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now some people might say, well, that doesn't include saved Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. Sure it does. Verse 10, the same passage I read, verse 10 previously, But, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You got to realize this. Every word that you said, you have to give account of that. You have to give 
a confession of your wrongdoing. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. So the idea is this. The idea is that because they keep uh, accusing me and other Bible believers for being quote-unquote Rachmanites, I'm saying that at Philippians chapter 2, as I preach against these accusers, when I preached against these accusers, I said that at Philippians 2, that they're going to confess that Jesus is Lord, and they'll also confess their wrongdoing. So they're going to admit that they were wrong about dispensationalism, and that they were wrong about Ruckman and to other Bible-believing preachers. That's scripture. I showed you the verse on that. So not because Ruckman is Jesus. That's not why I mentioned Ruckman. I only mentioned Ruckman because these guys accuse us for being Ruckmanites, so that's why I obviously mention Ruckman within that passage about where they're going to confess Jesus is Lord with Romans chapter 14, they're going to be confessing their wrongdoing, okay? Now, another thing is this, it's very strange to me that these same people, they are actually bullies on the internet who name call other Bible-believing preachers, and not just Bible-believing preachers, but fundamentalist preachers, they would name call them and then bully them, and these people are dominators of the internet, so they feel like they have power and they can say and name call and do whatever they want. They even called me a queer and a fag. And they called other preachers dykes, queer, and fags. Now, because of that, I name-called them as well. Now, when I name-called them, it's very strange to me that these cult pastors, they would start whining. Oh, they name-called my church and stuff like that. Well, you name-called good, genuine preachers, some good, genuine Bible-believing preachers. So, obviously, I don't apologize for name-calling you in return. Strange, this kind of bully attitude. When you get called out in return, you just play the card, oh, I'm a victim here, when you actually victimize so many other people. That's just wickedness. Matthew chapter 23, Jesus Christ, he named called the religious leaders, he called them serpents, generation of vipers, white sepulchers, he strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, and then twofold more a child of hell than yourselves. So Jesus did a lot of name calling as well, and I don't apologize for name calling heretics who deserve it, who actually bully other people. I don't apologize for that one. All right, another accusation is that they were trying to say that I said the original Greek is garbage. Now, before there's a misunderstanding, what's very strange to me is this, is that out of 2,000 plus videos that I have online, it happened to be just that one video that they take five to seven second clips of it so that they can catch yours truly for saying something wrong and bad about the Greek. Now, the thing is this, the reason why I was criticizing the original Greek was because of the Greek and Hebrew scholars, their form of original Greek. In other words, not the genuine one. If they watch my 2000 plus probably videos, they'll realize that I'm not against the original Greek, where the King James Bible came from. I recognize that. But I make fun of it because of the so-called original Greek that modern scholars claim they know and claim they have. So the thing is this, is that it's just so weird to me that some of these people, that they would call me a run-of-the-mill preacher, that I'm a fake pastor with only three people, or maybe some loser in a living room, you know? was just a social network platform, then why would they overlook my 2,000 plus videos and they have to troll and then get me on that one video? I guess they think I must be really that important to them that out of the thousands of videos, they would find that one to get me on. Unless those guys are internet losers themselves who only go by the internet, the social network platform. Ah, that would make sense why they would bully other people on the internet and they wouldn't confront the pastors in person because, see, these people are internet losers. All they retreat to is the internet. And they think that anybody online, even some random Joe <laughs> who's just posting a video in the living room maybe, they'll, they'll all pounce on him on that one. And it's embarrassing if you call yourself a pastor and you got like maybe 20 others who would pounce on some guy who's stuck in a living room. 
if they really think I'm that type of person. <laughs> Very weird, so I guess I must be important to them. Well, anyways, the thing is this, is that, I mean, with all their false accusations where they accuse yours truly that I'm a fake pastor, fake church, I'm some loser stuck in a living room, look, they can think whatever they want. My members are the evidence, as well as the visitors who come around the world and around the states who visit my church. But aside from that, let's do this. So they mention about uh, the original Greek. So I was criticizing the original Greek of the so-called from Hebrew and Greek scholars. Now, the thing is this, in the videos, you'll notice that that's totally a misunderstanding. So we're going to argue this. We're going to argue that we do believe that it's not just the originals, but that the copies and so many translations that came out of this, so many copies and manuscripts that came out of it, that they are perfect. Amen. And that's why they will accuse you and they will mislabel you for saying, well, say, say, they think that the KJV can correct the originals, can correct Greek and Hebrew, can correct all these things. That's where they get the mislabel on. That's not what we're saying. We believe that the KJV is perfect. Why? Because we believe that the Lord, from the originals, translated it and, and preserved it through the copies and the KJV retained every word of what God intended. It. Do you think the King James Bible is perfect? Well, the Greek word, the Greek word, the Greek word. What? 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 Uh, yes. <laughs> what? Well, preacher, you'll yeah. probably see a few Greek words and Jesus say, no, say it in English. <laughs> By the way, your Greek is not the original Greek anyway. I can hear yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. watching all those videos you'll see what I'm condemning right here and that I'm not against the real original Greek but I'm condemning the original Greek from the Greek and Hebrew scholars because they're claiming that they have it but Jesus Christ tells them no you got the uh, wrong one the figment of your imagination it's not the real one so the thing is this here what really troubles me about some of these cult pastors who are really trying to condemn me and catch me on something is that these people will claim, listen up now, they will claim to be KJV only people. But in reality, you're going to find out that they are actually Greek only people. These guys are not genuinely, they are not genuinely King James only people when they profess themselves to be. Now, I'm going to give you this comment and it's posted publicly online so you can't take that back. So these cult pastors who try to condemn yours truly, this cult pastor claims that he's KJV only, but look what he says, he's actually Greek only. Quote, these Ruckmanites are complete idiots. They give KJV only a bad name. The KJV is right because the original Greek is right. If the Greek Textus Receptus were wrong, that would make the KJV wrong since that's where it came from. Now, if... This guy claims to know Greek and Hebrew. Th that is the most dumb thing you can ever say because the Textus Receptus, there are variations in it. In fact, there are readings in it that do not match with the King James Bible. So the guy who claims to be Greek doesn't know much Greek. You'll notice that he is truly TR only. In other words, Textus Receptus only, a.k.a. Greek only. That's what he really is, bottom line, because he believes, I mean, he said it right here. What would make the KJV wrong is if the Greek Textus Receptus is wrong. So his final authority, he admitted, was his Greek that he chose. Why do I say that? Because there are many different Greek manuscripts you can select. Textus Receptus is just one of them. So the thing is this, is that he would like to go by the Textus Receptus, but the thing is this, is that... The Textus Receptus actually contradicts the KJV in several places. 
For example, 1 John chapter 2, verse 23, half of it is gone out of your so-called Greek, but the KJV retains a full reading. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Now this is what your so-called Greek cuts off. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. By the way, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 through 8, in that passage, the so-called majority of Greek manuscripts supposedly do not have 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 through 8. It's an important verse on the Trinity. So what are you going to do with that one? By the way, you got like 5 to probably 13 Textus Receptus editions. They're not all the same. You got Elzevir, you got Biza, you got Stephanus, and you got all these other different Textus Receptus manuscripts, Colonnaeus, etc. So uh, what are you going to do? They all, they all have variations. I'm going to show you. Here's a screen right here of the Textus Receptus. Now look at all the red marks right here, which shows that it does not contain the KJV reading. So you'll notice right here that in all these red markings, you'll see that the Textus Receptus does not contain all the readings as the same as the KJV. So the issue is this. The issue is, is the Greek manuscript or the TR, your final authority, or the KJV? So the cult pastor who claimed to be KJV only and not Greek only, his true colors were exposed. He's Greek only because he confessed... He actually said, I told you from the comment, that the KJV is wrong if the Greek Textus Receptus is wrong. Now, this guy has sloppy, shoddy manuscript evidence knowledge. So you gotta understand this. The King James Bible is not just from the Textus Receptus. You gotta understand this, is that uh, we would like to call it the traditional text, but here's the idea. There are manuscripts that came from Antioch, Syria. Textus Receptus is just one of them. There were many manuscripts that the Lord used from Antioch, Syria, and then we would like to say all manuscripts in line with the traditional text. And Texas Receptus is just one of them. So the King James Bible came from that line. So you're obviously going to find variations, contradictions, and errors in between. So the King James Bible is such a superior Bible. It's such a perfect word of God because it took all the best manuscripts from the traditional text culminated it together and we have the word of god today so the thing is this is that if you want to keep following a cult pastor who teaches greek sessions online because he liked to give you his own inter interpretations of greek and what to correct on and he probably did some of that you should definitely question that and you should really wonder if he is truly king james only or tr only texas receptus only his final authority is truly the Greek.